This is the brand new Vivo X90 Pro Plus and it comes with this giant and innovative camera system with an all new one inch main camera sensor which is much bigger than what you have on the iPhone 14 Pro Max and the Google Pixel 7 Pro and Vivo says that this makes a big difference. So here we have the iPhone and the Pixel to see if this new phone has indeed managed to make a better camera. Hello guys, my name is Vic with Phone Arena and let's get this camera comparison started and first let's get the front camera out of the way and you can immediately see that the Vivo stands out but unfortunately not in a good way. Dynamic range is really suffering with the front camera, the background here is all blown up while the iPhone and especially the Pixel still show that nice blue color of the sky which is just missing on the Vivo. Front camera video doesn't seem to be a priority for Vivo, it can only record 1080p while the iPhone and the Pixel shoot more detailed 4K video. And now if you ask us about which of these two phones wins this round, well the Pixel exposes my face a bit better but if you look at the shadows near my jacket, oh, the iPhone shoots super clean footage so it has the upper hand. Now interestingly the Vivo also has this cool steady face toggle for the front camera video which crops in just slightly to give you improved video stabilization but the stabilization is already okay as it is and it would have been much better if we had better dynamic range and the 4k option instead. And jumping over to the selfie photos, the Pixel has just a slightly wider field of view than the other two phones which is great for a group of friends but the Vivo is also doing a decent job and we actually prefer its brighter exposure here. But it's weird that you don't get a button to quickly switch between a wide and a close-up view for the selfies, you have to kind of pinch to zoom in and out on the Vivo which is not very convenient. The iPhone and the Pixel just feel easier to use for selfies. By the way, if you enjoy this video, hit that subscribe button to get our newest videos first. But the real star of the show with the Vivo X90 Pro is the main camera. With that massive one inch type sensor and just look at that crazy natural bokeh that you get on the Vivo. For shots like this you really don't need to use portrait mode at all, this larger sensor does all the job on its own. And we'll look at night photos in a while where this sensor really shines but what about just photos captured during the day? Well the Vivo defaults to images with saturated colors but you also have a very neat setting right in the camera app where we can switch to Zeiss natural colors. And this is just a great idea, a quick toggle to switch between vibrant colors and neutral colors. Some people like the vibrant colors, others prefer more realistic ones. So this is a solution. And here's the difference between those two modes on the Vivo X90 Pro Plus. Now for this comparison we stick with the defaults which is the vibrant mode on the Vivo and whoa, this is really really intense. The Vivo goes crazy with the saturation as if you have some vivid filter applied to the image. And it's not just this one photo, it's pretty much all of them. Just look for the most saturated photo, chances are it comes from the Vivo phone, while the Pixel and the iPhone are way more balanced in their color reproduction. Now it's interesting how we found the Pixel colors just a bit too boring when we reviewed the phone, the Vivo goes overboard in the other extreme. The iPhone strikes a happy medium but it has its own issues. It just dials up the sharpness to an extreme level and we much prefer the softer and more natural detail from the other two phones. We can see that in this photo, colors vary quite a bit between the three phones but the iPhone has the more contrasty picture. Take a look at a few more photos, now to me the Vivo is just so similar to a Galaxy phone, both go for this saturated look while the iPhone and the Pixel shoot more realistic colors and if you ask for my personal preference I would prefer those more natural colors but of course having that quick toggle really helps on the Vivo. So this new phone really starts to shine at night where it makes full use of that large main camera sensor. In this photo of the Christmas tree the Vivo does an excellent job exposing the shadow areas and keeping a clean photo with great detail. Our office Christmas decoration also looks best on the Vivo, it has detail, a pleasing warm tonality, 
while the iPhone has captured an extremely bright photo that looks just bad in comparison. And on this next photo of me standing next to the Christmas tree, the Vivo has exposed a bit brighter than ideal and the Pixel has the better photo here, but the Vivo still does a very good job. So it's a close call between the Pixel and the Vivo on most of the night shots, but the Vivo definitely outdoes the iPhone, which consistently captured overexposed night photos with far less detail. And in this photo of the clock tower, the Vivo has the most authentic nighttime look, but in other cases, it lifts up the shadows a bit more than the rest. And if you zoom in on those shadows, it's also really impressive how there is very little noise. So it's a very clean image. The Pixel so far has been our number one ranking phone for nighttime photos, and it has finally found its match in this year, Vivo X90 Pro Plus. But there is one mode that I really like on the Vivo X90 Pro Plus that you just don't get on the other two. Just look at that photo of the moon on the iPhone. Then look at the same photo captured on the Google Pixel. Now it's just not a shot that you want to share like ever. And then here is how this same photo looks on the Vivo with 10 times zoom. Wow, that is really impressive and you can zoom further in. This second shot is at 40 times zoom and you can see a shocking amount of detail. Really impressive. Now we also tried using the 3x zoom on the iPhone at night and the 3.5x zoom on the Vivo but couldn't find too much of a difference and even the Pixel while using digital zoom did an excellent job. Now the Vivo comes with two zoom lenses. You get a 2x zoom camera and then a 3.5x zoom one but it can actually use software to zoom up to 100 times. Now that's a gimmick of course, image quality really falls apart after about 20x or 30x zoom, but it's cool to at least have that option if you don't take it too seriously. The Pixel Max is out at 30 times zoom and the iPhone can zoom up to 15 times. And this is how zoom quality looks during the day. Now if you're not blinded by these super vivid colors on the Vivo, the detail is actually quite similar at 3x zoom. At 5x zoom, the Pixel has the cleanest detail with that native 5x zoom lens, but it's not a huge difference from the other two. Finally, at 10 times zoom, the Vivo surprised us. It actually manages to pull ahead, its processing is just superior, everything looks sharper and cleaner, and it's a step above the iPhone and the Pixel. Now, zoom in video, however, is a slightly different story. The Vivo has colder colors and struggles with dynamic range, plus you can spot quite a bit of noise even during the day. The Pixel is better, but has a slight warm cast and some noise issues, while the iPhone, despite only having a 3x zoom camera, manages to look good at 3x zoom, 5x zoom and even 9x zoom, which is its maximum zoom range. Now, of course, you also have an ultra-wide camera on all three phones. The colors again make it easy to recognize the Vivo and let's zoom in and see the amount of detail, which is actually quite comparable on all three phones. You not only have two zoom lenses, which are perfect for portraits, you also get a bunch of specialized portrait mode styles that mimic some of the coolest portrait lens in existence. Here's a quick look at the different styles that you get. The Biotar one. So here is a quick look of the different styles. The Biotar one is my personal favorite with that swirly bokeh. But you have Sonar with the creamy bokeh style and Planner with the cat eye bokeh bows in the background that really stand out. It's just really cool having this kind of control over your portrait shots and I don't know of any other phone that goes into so much detail to make sure that you capture great looking portraits. The iPhone and the Pixel don't have anything close to that. But the Pixel specifically just plain sucks for portrait photos. Using that zoomed in view produces photos with terrible detail. This is the one camera feature where Google needs to improve the most. Now we also love that you have 2x zoom on the Vivo and the iPhone which is just perfect for everyday portraits. 
you don't have to step back as much as with a 3x zoom and it allows you to capture more of your environment. And this is an audio quality test. So right now I am talking to the Vivo X90 Pro Plus. This is an audio quality test. And right now I'm talking to the iPhone 14 Pro Max. This is an audio quality test. And right now I'm talking to the Google Pixel 7 Pro. This is an audio quality test. Which one sounds better? Well, this is what video stabilization looks on the Vivo X90 Pro Plus. Just walking at a casual pace. And it's really interesting to see if this regular video stabilization is actually better than what you get on the iPhone and the Pixel. Okay, the Vivo X90 Pro Plus brings what is supposed to be a revolutionary one-inch type camera sensor and it's without a doubt among the finest camera systems in 2023. Photo quality is outstanding and especially so in low light where this new sensor really shines. Those who take portrait photos should also consider this phone, but it's not the perfect camera and video quality and especially the front camera could use some improvement. But these are our thoughts. Let us know in the comments which phone you think did the best in this comparison and why. And if you enjoyed this video, a sub to the channel would be awesome and we'll ensure you don't miss more camera comparisons like this one. So thanks for watching. My name is Vic and I'll catch you guys in the next one.